nourishing our souls with Lifting Hope. Lifting Hope is a program based on the book Memoirs of a Suicide, and it comes to us beautifully to teach us what we didn't know. Today we're going to talk about chapter 21, part of it. It's about arts and rehabilitation, okay? This chapter is very interesting. It's the second to last chapter, and it's an opportunity for us to revisit part of our potentialities that we have not been using. Are you ready for this? Think about this. God created us with the divine potential. Do you think you know the much that you're capable of? Of course we don't. We have a lot to conquer. And we're going to learn today that there are many aspects that we can use in developing ourselves, even to rebalance ourselves. Okay? We are at a moment in this book in which Camilo is going to talk about some therapeutics that they use in the spiritual realm for rehabilitation. And if we know it, we can also help ourselves right here and now. All right. Are you ready for this? I am going to. All right. One second. Okay. One minute. Here we are. Huh? I'm going to open the book. There. Chapter 21. Hello, Ellen Swift. Hello, Jailton. Hello, Silvio Tero. These are the friends that I can see here. Let me see if I can see more friends from the other side over here. I see sunshine. Hello, sunshine. Hello, Carol Correa. Hello, friends. What a joy. You know, Rihanna is here with us. Welcome. We're forming this classroom and we're going to be delighted about the much we can learn with Camille. Let's go straight to the chapter. Chapter 21, the female element. I'm going to divide this chapter in two parts because one is about the arts and the other is about women. Today we're going to talk about art and rehab. Tomorrow we talk about the second part, okay? So for now, remember, Camilo just finished his regression therapy. It was intense. It was difficult. And he says it. He says, supported by the compassionate arms of Pedro and Celustio, I left the sanctuary where the sacred mystery of so many migrations had been lifted from the repositories of my own soul, as well as that of my companions, a fact, that which, a fact which had offered us such invaluable elucidations. The effort to remember them had been exhausting, despite the powerful presence and assistance of our eminent instructors. The memories of my criminal past and the sufferings I experienced through the centuries relieved and examined for understanding the present had shocked me profoundly, mm, leaving me weakened and my sentiments and faculties traumatized. I actually felt ill as a result. My mind and sentiments had clashed in a tiring an intricate personal psychical review process. Therefore, after the session, I was taken to a medical office next to the room where those sublime singular experiences had taken place. Two initiates were on duty because experiences such as mine were quite common. Even daily among patients whose sinful mental baggage drove them to in uncontrollable hallucinatory outbursts that sometimes bar bordered on madness. Well, kindly received, the fragrance of consoling charity was extended to my fragile and fainted-hearted spirit. The legion servants applied 
magnetic treatment to alleviate the urgency of the moment, followed by a very effective clinical psychical therapy in the days that followed. Okay, let's stop for a moment. We're talking about emotional drainage. It says if you have a wound and you open and you drain it all out and treat it again. So that's what he's doing, emotional drainage. But he needed to be let out. He came at the right time. And you see why. The good spirits, apparently, when we look at it, we think, I can't believe the good spirits are doing this to him. But they are doing this at a very particular time. And what time is it? Remember, he spent years and years in the hospital. Now that he's at the university sector, he's granted an opportunity to be more instructed, but mostly about himself, self-knowledge. Now he's fully aware why he's going through what he is going through why he incurred in so many mistakes he can handle it but he's not alone you see why this book is lifting up our hopes because he's it's as if he's going through a surgery it's hard it's intense it's cutting the tissue it's widely opening it, but we're taking that unneeded load out. Because now once he's fully aware and has the Christian perspective, he can heal it faster. Right, Adriana Lemos? How are you? All right. So here we have at the end of a few days, so he received the passes. We call it the magnetic treatment here. It's like the passes. See how important the passes is? And I don't think spiritists really value it as much as we should. We value studies, right? They are very important. But the spiritist um, practices, if I may say this way, they're so beneficial. The prayers. We should pray more often. Because we study a lot in Spiritism. But we should pray more. Mm -hmm. You know, these days are pre-Easter, right? Many people who are of Catholic traditions, they start the fasting for 40 days. And the, the Lent, it's about the Lent. So, some people think, ah, we're spiritists, we don't do this. Okay, maybe we should start doing it, not out of ritual, but exercises, because Jesus did it himself. He went to the desert for 40 days to pray, to fast. There were reasons he did it. We need to do something as well to recharge. Like Camilo, he is in this rehabilitation process. And he went through, like I would say, a moral surgery there to expunge a few things that were no longer needed, to be fully aware so he can keep working on his healing. But he receives help. They continue counseling him, and they give him the spiritual therapy. Right, La Souza? Welcome to Kardec Radio. Now, he says here, At the end of a few days, as I return to the light of un unambiguous reality, completely lucid as far my, as my personality was concerned, I reflected maturely and made a single decision that would enable me to completely rehabilitate myself before my conscience and the supreme law that I had been infringing for so long. I 
would reincarnate. Yes, I would reincarnate once again. I would endure reincarnation in order to suffer the trial of the laws of my physical eyesight with serenity and dignity. The trial that I had recently failed because I did not submit to it, preferring suicide to a life without sight. Thus, I would act in a different way than I had in the past. That is, one, I would love my fellow beings compassionately and charitably. Two, I would protect, aid, and serve my neighbor by utilizing every legitimate and benevolent means within my reach. And if possible and necessary, as a result of the moral failures of my bitter past, I would go as far as the selflessness of sacrifice building up aspects of the true good, which would help me purge the darkness that I had sown. He felt sad, he said. He felt deeply sad because of remorse. That's why he couldn't feel happy. But he had the loving and kind instructors, including the female instructors, and their examples telling, we went through that, We're, we succeeded, you can do it too. Okay. As a matter of fact, one of the, our biggest incentives to conform to the situation was the art and morality gatherings. Write it down. Art and morality gatherings to which we have already referred. With the passing of time, they acquired a special place because they are examples, demonstrations, and analysis, analysis were useful for our particular rehabilitation by pointing out the pathway to follow, the models to emulate. Thus, in the city parks, whose extent we had not yet been able to ascertain, there were areas of beauty inconceivable to a human being, such as the superiority of the whole, as well as of each detail, and such were the evocative nuances that attracted one's thoughts to the utmost harmony in art, which involved residences in particular, etc., 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 etc. Pause, pause, pause. This is so beautiful. Are you artistic? Let's do an assessment here. What is your artistic side? Do you have like an artistic vein? Because if you do, we need to talk about art and morality. If you say, I don't, we need to discover it and talk about art and morality. Ah, uh, I didn't know. I had to look for it. Yes, we do. Art is life. What do I mean? Poetry, play, theater, music, drawing, coloring, painting, singing, playing instruments. There's so many things and I'm just giving a few. Art is about beauty, says Leon Denis. And beauty is God's creation. So when we are co-creators, We are naturally artistic because art depends also on creativity and it generates harmony and beauty. That's the true art. So where is that in you? Camilo is giving to us a beautiful explanation on how the exercise of art and morality Harmony in art can benefit the mental balance of ourselves. But if you look at our planet Earth right now, arts are used in a way that sometimes doesn't resonate. Because sometimes it's just expression of whom we've been, which is not very harmonious. It's not very beautiful. We're talking about using the arts to conquer that inner balance. 
I'll give an example. As mentor Joseph said, there will be one day in which we'll give courses for people like children in school, not only to learn to write, but to write the good. Like when teacher in first grade says, let's write about a turtle. You know, like, why do I have to write about a turtle? Well, art and morality, huh? Let's talk about the beauty, God's beauty in a turtle. On a turtle, I don't know, it could be anything. Or how a turtle is so well connected to our planet and is beneficial to her environment. I'm just saying it. But then we're going to write with a purpose, not to entertain, but to create harmony. That's a completely different story. We'll no longer hear crazy music and see paintings that are true expression of the inner neurosis or the inner psychosis. And we go to those galleries and we're like, I can't believe this is a million dollar picture. Sometimes we're shocked. A million, four million, or much more. And you look at the painting and say, I could easily do something bad. I can't believe somebody pays for that. And we think, maybe I'm the total ignorant. No, you are not. Because that's not what art is about. Art is about harmony. And beauty. Life. In this university sector, Camilo discloses to us that all the instructors are versed in some form of art and they use it to create a balance, to emanate harmony, thus stimulating rehabilitation. Art therapy, but not this therapy that just allows us to vent it out, but this therapy that raises up Okay? It's about raising us up. Doing things that will be art for the good. Art for the good. Of all, harmony in art. And he says, These reached mind-boggling proportions, unimaginable to any earthly thinker, as in the case of Frédéric Chopin, whom we had the pleasure of seeing transfigure the magic sounds into an enchanting poetic vocabulary, translated into a sequence of enrapturing visions, visions that surpassed our ideas of beauty, while unexpected sentiments through, brought tears to our eyes, thus aiding in the awakening aiding in the awakening of the spiritual faculties that lay dormant in the folds of our being. One could go as far as to say that music and poetry were the arts preferred by the initiates. If it was possible to conceive of such predilections in minds of such as theirs, educated according to the most advanced principles of the ideal, we were able to imagine. This even extended to exact reproductions of panoramas that recalled the messianic pilgrimage. Oh, wow. We had the most gratifying experience of walking beside the Lake of Genesareth and of visiting other biblical locations, all witnesses of the divine ministry of the Lord. These reproductions were so infused with reality that it felt as if the divine friend had just left, since we still received the mental repercussions of the sweet whispering of his voice, emitting the last sounds still vibrating in the air of the unforgettable melody that resonated in the hearts of the disinherited 2,000 years ago. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, 
and you find rest for your souls. Wow. Of course, Camilo, once he was experiencing this, he had painful tears of repentance, recalling when in the year 33, he was one of the people who shivered, as he says, diabolically demanding the haste of his Jesus' death. Okay. Now, we are going to talk about here ourselves. It's ourselves. We need to assess. We're all evolving, acquiring new and experiences and knowledge. We are habilitating ourselves. So tonight, we all have an invitation. In the next 24 hours, choose, choose one, one, go to the gospel according to spiritism. That's an exercise. Choose a passage. Let's say I open here, orphans. Read it. And then take any form of art. It could be drawing, coloring, writing, writing any of any style and type, could be poetry or not, music, playing an instrument, dancing, singing, and take the best parts of it all and compose something or create something that will make people who see it who listen to it, who are exposed to that art, feel deeply connected to God. You want to try the challenge in the next 24 hours? Shall we try it? Hmm? This is art and morality. It's an art that is beyond just working with the senses of the body or the pleasures. It's about elevation. An art that catapults us, that awakens in us the faculties that are immortal. So this is the exercise for us in the next 24 hours. Camilo is sharing with us that we will one day develop this to a level in which we will create scenarios, like he said, reproducing even Jesus' passages and making people feel as if they were in front of the Master. This is art for the good. Art for the good. Sublime teachings. At each daily gathering, visitors, and in particular patients, were offered wonderful hours of sublime teachings, during which we could see moving examples of selflessness, dedication to others, humility, and patience, as well as heroism and moral value in the face of our diversity. Okay? He says a little more. Afterwards, we were invited to give our opinion and appraisal and a moral and artistic comments to what they were watching by the very instructors. What we observed amongst many other important things for our readjustment in the area of, area of morality was the surprising fact that human beings are surrounded by the most wonderful expressions of an art superior to all others, the glorious art of learning to develop the spiritual qualities that are latent in the depths of their soul. Wow. And they see one of the instructors, Rita de Cassia, who was a poet. She had the sensitive posture as a Christian believer and she was expressing her poetry to Camilo and the group as the sun was slowly setting. So it was almost like a, 
a whole background created for the, the moment, right? But it was truly therapeutic. And then she asked for one of the Kanaleha's doctors to play the harp and completing the whole therapeutic scenario there. So I think we need to pause because we're going to come back tomorrow with how important it is to talk about the feminine. The art is about the right hemisphere of the brain. It's about the feminine in all of us. And it's about health. So let us challenge ourselves, shall we? To build up this moment art for the good. Go to the gospel according to spiritism. Choose a passage. Read it. Highlight it. It doesn't need to be long. It could be one item, one paragraph, one sentence. And take a piece of paper, crayons, color pencils, markers, or paint. Or put some music and dance, or play some music. Sing something that you feel like singing that would be correlated to that. But let's do it thinking how that expression in art could elevate not only ourselves but others who will be who would potentially be exposed to that if you're gonna write a po poetry about it if you want to submit it to us just send it to kardecradio at gmail.com we'll be happy to see what you've done teresa castro you're up for the challenge huh it's wonderful she says when we sing we pray twice for Andrea Lewis book, can't remember which book. I agree with you. I agree. Andrea Lewis talks about that too. In Osolar, there's a reference, but I remember, I think, uh, some other books, maybe Workers of the Life Eternal, I think, or so, they talk about, or Between Heaven and Earth, they talk about this expression of arts. So here, we have arts for the good to boost harmony in us, in others. It's about beauty, harmony. It's about elevation and boosting the divine in us. Okay? That's our proposal today. We're gonna stop here for our prayer and use the Ave Maria to make us feel connected to Mother Mary, who is in charge of this big awakening for us, huge, to show who we are and to, to say there's so much more to us, to ourselves. We can't limit ourselves to what we've known this far. So that's why it's important for us to boost our potential to a new level. Shall we, friends? Yes, you ready? Yes, to pray. We're going to pray. I'm going to play the Ave Maria. I wish I could play. One day I will play it here so we can pray. Let us feel the music first. Let us breathe in and out, feeling the beauty of each note that is being played. This is art for the good. The composer created this in reverence and expresses his reverence 
while stimulating in us a feeling of spirituality, religiosity, and especially to the feminine in all of us. Dear Mother Mary, you are the representation of this beautifully balanced feminine, compassionate and strong, loving and yet courageous. You are the ideal of the feminine in us. May we be inspired by your loving attitude and bring consolation to all of us. We pray that our homes be enveloped by your healing light. We don't ask this in selfishness, but humbly sharing with you our need, our need to find the balancing within ourselves. And we pray especially tonight for the suicidal spirits around the earth. May they feel your loving embrace, the warmth of your sky blue healing blanket of light. And thus, hear your words saying, my dear child, this shall pass. My dear child, this shall pass. My dear child, this shall also pass. May we stay, Mother Mary, under your guidance, under your protection, as we cultivate each and every lesson this far and with you. to the benefit of all. With your permission, we close these moments of deep therapy for our souls, and so be it. Right, Carol Correa, ready. We have a beautiful proposal here. How exciting is this? If you have children, invite them too. Mm -hmm. You can give them words, keywords, but it is on us. And if you want, take a picture, send it by email to kardecradio.gmail.com. We will love to see it, okay? And you can also come back here at Kardec Radio and post it right here for us tomorrow, if you want, okay? And share your art for the good. Because after all, we are here to co-create the good with God, right? No longer the arts just to release the pains, but to elevate our souls and make us connect and also share this good with others. Art is about life, is about harmony. And today, Kardec Radio comes here to stimulate that in us. After all, you know... Kardec Radio is here to nourish our souls. Thank you, friends. A big hug to you. Until tomorrow, God willing. Thank you, Raquel Bakeshi, Patty Soares. Thank you, Sunshine. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye.